Hey, Cyber Dragon here. Bringing you guys part 7 of What If Deku Was Sub Zero. So, depending on how far I get into this video, I'm guessing there might be one or two more parts to this series. For now, once season 5 gets out and I watch that, I will add more, but yeah. If you're a manga reader, then sorry, I guess you kind of have to wait if you actually like this series a whole lot. But if you just kind of like, eh, it's a Bringly Taskmaster or Deoxys, then I get you, but still. And uh, speaking of which, I will be starting on Taskmaster, like continuing Taskmaster today. I may or may not do a third video for Sub-Zero or Deoxys if I'm in the mood. Because lately I've been kind of just cooped up at home and... Yeah. The first few days, like one or two days is good when you have nothing, like a break. But when it's like almost every day now, you start to get bored. And uninspired. So, let's, uh, get to this part. So, it is the next day, and, uh, I'm not gonna do the Eye Island Expo. It's not relevant enough to do for this series. It's just gonna end up the same anyways. So, yeah, I should basically do that. And if you guys actually do want a part for that, I will consider it, just put it down in the comments, but if I don't get any comments for that, then I'm just not going to bother with it. Neither I'm going to not bother with the two, the second movie. For one, I actually have not seen that second movie yet. The key word is yet. But, yeah, so, you know, uh, it is now the next day. Aizawa comes in. Telling everyone that even if you failed, you'll still go into the training camp. Everyone gets excited. Except for Frost. She was semi-awake during the fight. She didn't fail the test, but she wasn't happy either. She saw how Deku handled All Might, defeating him in a clash of fists, no less. Now she doesn't care to be the number one hero, she just cares to be number one in general. And attempt to, if she has a chance, to kill her own brother. And, yeah. I think you, if you guys are smart enough to get where I'm going with this, because I might be going for the one for all fight here. Or uh, all for one. See, even if I know the names, I get confused. But yeah, so... So, everyone starts to get on the bus. They are leaving immediately. Not even time to go shopping and whatnot. They want everyone to get ready. Because Deku is ahead of everyone. Compared, because they all saw the fight. And yeah, Deku and Momo sitting next to each other, and Bakugo and Umaraka sitting next to each other. Momo is just cuddling up to Deku, Deku's arms around her. She's just enjoying life right now, and Umaraka is taking the lead on that too, doing some similar thing. And just cuddling up to Bakugo. Embarrassed, obviously, because, you know, those two relationship can't have evolved tremendously, but Umarok and Bakugo, they're more slow to this. Not to say not going slow isn't bad, but if you guys can go fast in your relationship, good for you. If you guys take it slow, just do your own thing, enjoy your life. But yeah, Deku notices that. Well, I guess I know who wears a relation, my pants in your relation, guys' relationship. Bakugo go to starts yelling like, "Shut up!" Said, "We're not. We all can't be as advanced as you two. 
than just doing all this stuff out in public. Not to mention you two have already done it. <laughs> and shit. But my own bl- just like leave it hiding there, right? Like we have taken our relationship further than most have in its span of how long have they already been in school, actually? Like, I never actually get that clarity from the anime, so... I'm gonna say months. From the couple of months they have known each other. Because she sort of thinks back on how they first met and how they are now. <laughs> Everyone wants us to chuckle a bit. Obviously, except for Frost. Because no having fun for her, apparently. Or socializing, either. So a couple hours pass. Uh, they get to the stop. They're at. Deku slips in. And looks around a bit. He is hella smart. And he definitely knows about the Wild Wild Pussycats. The training camp. He has done research on this type of stuff. He's like. Oh shit. I realize where we are now. Uh, he was about to head to the back of the bus. But. The person can just push everyone off the cliff. That right there and then. And yeah, so Yeah, now they are just So Mandalay and Pexy Bob. Yeah, that kid is a bit too smart, so we had to just shove him off as quickly as we can. Makes sense. He is the top student in UA, I would say. He could. He even beat All Might in a fist-to-fist fight. Took him a little while, but he still won with barely any damage. So he said, as I said, all that to them, and they are shocked that, like, he needs training. <laughs> but yeah, no. Deku and all of them are down there. They're looking at me like, Well, I think I'm gonna head off. I'll see you guys at the end. He was about to teleport. Fucking go, Kyushima and... Kaminari like, Wait, you're not going anywhere. You're gonna stay here and fight with us. So you can just leave us like this? You know what? You're right. I would feel bad if I left all of you behind. Hey, Momo, can you come here? I want to see if you have any injuries on that. Okay, sure. She does, and Deku just grabbed onto her waist. She, he says to grit your teeth and see you all later. And he teleports with Momo. <laughs> They're like, uh, uh, they just... Come on, now. They just took... He didn't just not leave us, but he also took a student with them. But he did leave a little present behind. He made an ice uh, animal, an ice wolf with for them. So they can at least go through the forest tracking. Like, uh, oh, he left there, but... Still! Because I haven't used the ice animals as much. I used them, like, once or twice now. And I'm trying to get more akin to that. Like... He kind of just left that there, just to say, don't say I didn't leave you nothing to help you guys, basically. But yeah. That's basically why he left him there. And just for plot reason, I just wanted to. Yeah, so. Momo is. And Deku's at the camp. Momo's shivering a bit. Look, is that how it feels? The intensity of it? Of teleportation? Yeah, basically, but my body was made to handle it. And you obviously know my body was made for it. He is just, like, grinning at her. And he blushes, realizing what he's implying. But, yeah, I think I'm gonna cook them all dinner. I did leave them a little present behind, but... That w- the ice wolf I made, Luna, because that's what I'm just gonna call her, like Luna Lights, basically. You know, like, because you know, Arctic and whatnot and freezing. 
won't be, I don't think won't be enough. I don't think all of them will be cranky like Totoro and Ida and Forrest, but yeah, I do think a lot of them will be, so I will make them some food. You want to help out? She said, yeah, sure. And she took the chances to dress up like somewhat like a housewife. Did you that mention that? Like, you know, you kind of look like a housewife with the apron on like that. It, well, I always did want to be one. And who knows, maybe you, me, could be like husband and wife one day. He slightly blushes and thinks she's too cute. At times, for his sake. He... Uh, yeah. Hey, I know I'm blunt as hell, but I don't think we're ready for that part of our relationship. <laughs> he chuckled a bit because he is way too blunt in this, I will admit. And obviously they have moved fast in their relationship. After a while, the wild old pussycats got there, seeing that Deku and Momo were just cooking. So, Mandalay is like, I thought we dropped them on the same side of the cliff over everyone else. But where's everyone else? Oh yeah, I'm guessing he teleported. He has that ability to teleport, and apparently he can take other people. He has said that before, but he said it can be very intense for this, so... Most of the time he doesn't do it with others, unless he absolutely needs to, or I guess apparently wants to. And Deku saw them, saying, oh hey, uh, I think they will be here in another hour or two, at max, so I'm just cooking them some dinner so they don't get mad at me for leave, basically ditching them with, with Momo. But I'm not going to leave my girlfriend behind with a lot of them. So, yeah. They're like, uh, alright, sure. Uh, we'll just be over here waiting. And Deku Sarkota. He noticed he has water ability. Deku went up to talk to him. Koda was about to hit him. Tell Deku grab his hand. And obviously, and you, we all know where Koda was aiming for. The nuts. So, they hit something and said, You know, someone will cry if those get hit down there. That, so, and I don't want to put her through that type of uh, trauma. Nah. And really realizing what he's implying. Momo somewhat agreeing, but still embarrassed that he just said that to a child, no less. And Koda is just confused what he meant by that. They said he then asked, well, "Wait, what do you mean by that?" They said that don't worry about it, kid. You'll understand when you get older. But I noticed you have a water quirk, so that's pretty cool. Your quirk is similar to mine. Koda is like, "Wait, you have a water-based quirk?" They said, "Kind of. My quirk is called Cryomancer." I basically make ice, but I do control small um, small amount of water, but my primary use is ice. He forms an ice ball in one hand and a water ball in the other. Koda is amazed that someone with, similar to his quirk is here, of all places, and he starts to feel a little bad that he was about to punch him in the nuts, uh, someone similar to his quirk in the nuts. And he does apologize for that. And Deku said, don't worry about it, kid. And, yeah, so, if you want, I can teach you a thing or two about your quirk. So, if you like to. Go to th- th- about it. But he doesn't hate Deku like everyone else. He will be cold to everyone else, but he won't be cold to Deku. Because, you know, similar quirks. They have to respect their beeps. After a while, everyone else gets there. They're looking for Deku because some of them are somewhat mad. Bakugo, Kirishima, and Kaminari are mad. 
some of the girls are actually somewhat forgiving. Like Umaraka, because he did leave them an ice wolf that led them to the camp a bit faster. And, you know, wolves have great sense of smell. They see Deku and Momo cooking for them. Like, oh, you guys finally came back. Oh, uh, I cooked you guys all some food, so... All of them instantly forgives him. Bakugo forgives him because he has tasted Deku's cooking before, and that man can cook some good food. And then some people are shocked, like, Bakugo forgive him that fast? This food must be good. So they all eat, and they agree that it's so good. Frost doesn't really care. She does eat the food, but, you know, she doesn't... Care as much. Dude. And uh, everyone says relaxes for the day. And uh, Bakugo does go up to Code and he is the one who gets punched in the nuts instead. <laughs> so, because, yeah, he, that Bakugo was somewhat pissed at that. And Koda can't let that be because, you know, it's a similar quirks so that have to respect their peeps. And, uh, with the bros, the one night, and, uh, so, yeah, they're at the hot spring. Mineta does try to go up there, but Deku simply freezes him, and Koda just pushes him after he's frozen. Like, he's at the top that he reach, but Deku froze him instantaneously. Koda saw that, like, Whoa, what? So, he can freeze him all the way up here? The coach just pushes him over. Mineta just crack. Like, the ice around Mineta just breaks open and he is fine, just a bit disoriented. And Deku goes up to Mineta like, If you ever try to peep on my girl, you will see the next day. There. And Bakugo somewhat does the same, says the same thing. <laughs> like, he'll, I'll explode you all the way to hell. <laughs> Mineta gets the point. Like, Umaraka and Momo is marked as their girls. And, no, no scene with the Dakota falling off happens. But Deku does ask Mandalay, like, I notice he's cold to others, so why is that? Mandalay explains Koda a bit more. Deku is more understanding. But Deku and Koda actually hangs out quite a bit. Koda, because he actually found someone similar to his quirk. And Deku doesn't really need training, obviously. He actually beat Tiger fast. He doesn't have much to learn. As I was just said, try to help some other people practice with their quirks and just kind of learn some new stuff as you go along. I don't know. And Lazaro seriously thinks he's already ready to become a hero, but he still has to go through the, you know, licensing and whatnot. Like, if it was up to me, kid, you would have already gotten your license by now. You've shown to be more heroic than most heroes I know. You don't really care about fame. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you're the one who took out Stain and not Endeavor. I'll try to take out Stain, so. And not uh, only that, but. So that you defeated All Might and didn't even care about the glory that you did take down All Might. I think you're definitely more ready to be a hero than most. But the state still wants you to go through school, so I hope you understand. As I was simply said that to him before. Like Han, when before Koda and him left. Deku should talk to him like, hey, I know about your past, about heroes and whatnot, and so here's the yeah, um, 
My parents were stupid for be wanting to be heroes, and so people were just killing everyone. Said so, that being Coda, they said the kid, you're more dumb than I thought you were. So if they were, so if people didn't become heroes, and there was just people everywhere, who do you think would stop them? The police weren't sure how to stop them. True, heroes' job is supposed to protect people. And some do you see it just as a job. Some see it as a responsibility. Your parents obviously did. When I heard they died, I felt sad for them. And I knew they had families that would grieve mourn them. And knowing that you're one of them says I don't think they thought of it as a selfish thing. They wanted to build a better world for you. For all of us. So I honor any fallen hero every day, like them. And I hope you can at least be grown up enough and responsible enough to get what your parents were trying to do. So trying to make a better world for not only you, but for everyone. Coda tears up a bit, realizing he was kind of being a like an idiot. But he's also mad at Deku because anytime he tries to make he yells at him, Deku simply replies calmly and responsibly. Because he's cool headed and blunt as hell. He's not holding anything back. Saying like even if there were no heroes, this world would be more chaotic than it is already. We should be lucky that there's some people out there, even who's fake, still trying to protect people. And, so, the murderers, the rapists, and all those guys, they won't be stopped if no one tries. Don't mark down heroes. You don't have to like all heroes, but you can at least, as hell, show them some respect, and such. Kurta is crying. He, Deku comforts him. Like he might have been a bit too blunt. Mandalay seasons. It. You didn't have to be so blunt with him from the beginning. They said, I, I think he needed to hear that. I heard it at a younger age when I was like way younger when I was first uh, conscious of my surroundings. I've been taught that for years now. Since I was born, actually. I was with my quirk. So I had to know the responsibility of it and the price of it. And Coda there? I think he will be... He has the potential to do great things. And Deku and Coda's relationship kind of grew closer. Coda actually calls Deku Big Brother Deku or Izuku. Deku is actually happy that someone sees him as like a sibling instead of a rival. Because he is sad and that Frost does not see him as that. He always wanted to be close with Frost, but Frost never really gave him the time of day to do that. Or even wanted to. And now after the test, she doesn't even acknowledge him as a brother. This hurts him, but he will get over He getting over it. And Deku does say that like me introduce Coda to Frost, but you know he says uh, uh, Frost just annoys them both. Doesn't really care about anyone. Coda says she's not very kind, is she? But no, she's arrogant. Wish he would overcome it and see uh, the, what the real world is like. Somewhat. Stop being so prideful and arrogant. But yeah, now 1B finally gets there. One, like, Monoma is salty to Deku because, like, he let him, t- like, after feeling his. the. Uh, chill, like his coldness of his quirk, he says he resents Deku 
not all of one B does, but some does. Cause he did freeze some in place with his ice. Like defeat mostly. And yeah, so Monoma seeing Deku walking by. He said, Ah, isn't it the like the hmm the cl the leader of one A or some shit like that, like Oh, how high mighty of you to just walk by and see us all. Uh, I, like, shit like that. Like, that being Monoma, I can't really think of anything. So Deku is simply annoying him, and... So Monoma is just wailing on... Trying to wail on him, but he's not being faced. Koda, on the other hand, is like... Hey, you stop talking like that. So you want to be here, then start acting more like it. And shit. And just be more respectful for crying out loud. So, I'm like, <laughs> so, oh yeah, like, um, shut it, kid. So, you, so, you're irrelevant right now. So, I'm talking to the one, a superior, like, one a superiority complex over here. Because he, Monoma is more or less one with the superiority complex. So, I'm trying to pick on Deku. And Cody gets mad and so I'm warning you, stop it now or it's a bit of, stop it now. And it's like, oh what kid, what are you gonna do? Coda said shoot some water at him, like make the water ball and fire that throw that at him. Now Monoma doesn't like get sent flying, but it could, that's unrealistic. Him training with Deku for a bit. Now, because I'm going to say Deku has taught him some techniques to practice with his quirk. And once he gets those down and starts getting stronger, he will teach him more advanced water techniques. But for now, just do simple stuff. Like make small objects with his water. And uh, start leveling the pressurizing of his water. And he even asked Bakugo to teach him once he gets down some of the basics and whatnot of his quirk to teach him how to do the same thing Bakugo does in air flying. But yeah. So he just gets no knocked back a little, like he's like he takes a step back and I'm like, okay kid. So you got you man So and like Fuck, I'm blanking out right now, like I'm just went brain dead. Like, you ask for it now, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's just like, don't mess with me, or, or my big brother's gonna come after you. Like, something what a kid would say. Like, oh, your big brother, huh? What is he gonna do? I bet he's not even that strong. Deku just steps in front of him, like, you wanna bet? They're obviously not real big, like, brothers, but... Monoma realizing, wait. Like, cause you can get the details, like, water and ice, similar quirks, and Deku does, when he teleports, he does turn into water and just sink to the ground, so, they think, like, oh, shit, Monoma's dead now. Monoma, like, hmm, I might have been caught off guard with your quirk once, but I'm not gonna do that again. He did get someone's quirk a moment ago. I'm just gonna say it's, like, I'm just saying he did touch Bakugo to he did explode Deku's face. Tries to, but Deku just tanks it. Like doesn't even budge. Nothing looked like it was damaged. Like that's really all you got. Even if you borrow my friend's quirk, that's pathetic, man. I'll show you what a real explosion like I'm gonna show you what real power looks like. He tried he, um, uh, he just charges, like, one for all a bit, mixing with his ice, like, balls. Not inches. Or actually just mix an ice explosion with his ice, like, freezing technique. And just blast it in his face, freezing his head instantly. Knocking him over, sending him flying a bit to a tree. His chest and head, is, like all part of his body, is already frozen. 
And he looks at the rest of them like, if any of you try to talk to me or my friends like that, or to this kid, that is going to be you. He will be on Frozen for about an hour or so, so he will stay there until he learned his lesson. Deku simply walks off. Everyone's kind of, everyone in One B is kind of scared of him. Except for Kendo and Tetsu Tetsu. They realize Monoma does have an inferiority complex and they just accept Deku's like action of that. After a while, it is now the like the nighttime training, like the break challenge thing, like yeah, I forgot the name of it. So people start heading in. Deck is somewhat sensing that like some body temperatures are coming. To, oh, not body temperatures, but like seeing that there's fire and gas, like. Like, what is going on? This can't, like, is this a forest fire? And you're like, no, wait, it must be a villain attack. Pixie Bob does get, like, dragged, like, with Magni's power. But Deku submits an ice barrier in front of Pixie Bob catching her. He asks, like, are you okay, one? And she said, like, yeah, so I am. Uh, so thanks for catching me, midair. But this is a villain attack now, so you all need to run. Deku's like, I'm not gonna run. I need to find Coda first. So I realize he's not around, and I don't. I know where he's at. So let me go and get him. Pick Mandalay does say all right and go. It's like you have permission to use your quirk only for that instance and whatnot. They go. Like, go and gets to there. He got there in time because muscular was about to attack, but Deku freezes his, like, freezes some, uh, muscular's arm in place, like, when it's in the back, like, the joint of it. Muscular, like, what the? He can't really move as much right now because he doesn't have the muscle around his arm at the moment till he does. But by the time when he was about to swing, Code is already out of the way. Deku said, Coda, stand back. I'm going to handle him. But he realized Coda is somewhat shivering and afraid. Like, what's wrong? That, that, that's the guy who p- killed my mom and dad. Deku's eyes widen now. Like, so this is the bastard who did that. Guy, you have messed with the wrong pe- no, kid now. Not only that, but you're going to pay for all the heroes and civilian lives you have taken. Because he does recognize Muscular now. He has heard about Muscular, and he uh, is, like, appalled that, like, someone like him could have a powerful quirk in this world. And Muscular, like, huh, what are you going to do about a kid? Actually, by the looks of it, you're actually one of the targets we are here for. You're one of our kill targets, so after I kill you, I'm gonna go get after the other target we came here for. So we came here for one other target. So it's Izumi Midoriya. So can you tell me where she's at? Deku's eyes wide like why do you want my sister for? Ah, your sister, huh? Well then, if I take your limp dead body to her, maybe she'll just get enraged and try to fight us. And Deku is pissed beyond belief now that they're not, not only the killer of Coda's parents is right in front of them and may about to kill Coda, but also the fact that they're here for his sister, even though they don't see eye to eye. You still have to love your sister. And shit. Deku powers up to 20% for one for all. Now that performing two ice gauntlets on his arms. And these aren't regular ice gauntlets. These are dry ice ice gauntlets. Muscular in him starts to clash fish. Muscular 
arm but like burning like ah what is that stuff on your arm there is something to say dry eyes so I know what it can do to the human body fortunately enough my body is not affected by it but yours on the other hand you're done for Deku's wailing on him even made some like ice guards on his legs too like boots and whatnot with dry ice on him he's doing kicks punches Muscular can't really keep up, and even if he could block, the dry ice is destroying the muscle fragment, like the muscle augmentation on him. And eventually, Deku does deliver the final blow to the face, and he is knocked out. Some dry ice burns on his body, and on his, and on his face, obviously. Deku melts the dry ice off his body, and just freezes muscular in place like just in case if you wake up so they're downing it but can't be too safe all right Coda let's go Coda is happy that he was worried at first but he's happy to see Deku all right and beat muscular with ease okay big brother let's go he Deku carries Coda all the way to that making ice slide and just Sliding to there. Terribly he found Azara and said, Azara, I deal with one of the villains up on the mountain. They will be out for a while and I freeze them in place in case he tried to get out, so. You need to let me go out there. I know their intentions now. Azara said, okay, what are their intentions? They're after some students. They're here to kill me, De- uh, Bakugo, and Todoroki. And he had to kidnap Frost and most likely some other students. But it seems like Frost is their main target. Alright, kid. You're all allowed to use your quirk. You need to tell Mandalay. I will return the kid back to base. You should go there and do what you do best. Kicking ass? Kicking ass. As I runs back to the others. While the while Deku runs to Mandalay and say Telling man like tell everyone this you are all allowed to use your quirk. They are here to kill me Bakugo And Todoroki and here to kidnap Frost She does relay the message and I'm gonna say Frost and Momo was in a group together the Nomu is attacking Mo- uh, Momo obviously injuring her same as canon, but this time Mr. Compressed as she got to Frost, kidnapping her. They told him, Look, I got the main target. Is there anyone else we might want to kidnap or kill? And most of the guys are already being taken care of. Deku is helping out with Spinner and the Sue. But since it was a 4 on 2, they got them down easily. And Deku actually helped uh, Umaraka with Toga, but Toga got away, cause cannon shit. Uh, he does help with Tokoyami calming him down, but he still needed to get Todoroki and Bakugo without help. So he did get to Moonfish. Moonfish got taken down by Todo- uh, Tokoyami and Dark Shadow, and yeah, he did get help with. Bakugo and Todoroki. But as they are walking, they see Mr. Compress like in there just jumping away. They see that he has Frost in a marble state. Deku is beyond pissed now. He got to Frost, his sister, and somehow he also kidnapped to- uh, Tokoyami. Because I'm going to say he did get to him too, seeing that display. So these two will make a fine addition to our League of Villains and whatnot. So jumping away now. Deku told them like to wait here. I'm getting both of them back. Running after them. So, so I can press his, like, just in general... Running for his life, telling him, 
I got the main two, tar I got two targets, like, I got two guys with me, but one of the um, kill targets is chasing after me, and he looks pissed. He already took down Muscular and Moonfish. I'm bringing, like, him towards you guys to help me out. Everyone's going back to where they need to go. When Deku and Mr. Compress, all of them arrive there, Dobby says, well, this will be fun. An ice user. I can't wait to kill you, kid. Deku said, I'll give you one chance. Return both of them, and I will leave you with only slight and small amount of injury. But if you do not, my actions cannot be deemed for what I will be doing to you. Says, in a cold town. That was it. We'll see about that. Firing fire to kind of give him time to escape. Korgili already got uh, Spinner and Magni. And they're all about to leave. But Deku is just beating Darby's fire with his ice. Darby's like, what? What's going on? Yeah. Because Deku is using two of the coldest ices I can think of. Not only dry ice, but liquid nitrogen. Fusing the two into a liquid nitrogen blast with dry ice chunks in it. Freezing the flames itself and putting it out. Almost getting to Dobby. Mr. Compressed decides to, he only needs one, so he's about to throw it into the fires that Dobby has already lit. Deku seen that Tokoyami's in that one. He had to make a split decision. Save Frost and let Tokoyami die in the fiery demise, or save Tokoyami and have a hope to save Frost. So, he had to do one thing only. He saved Tokoyami, and Frost got kidnapped. Tokoyami got out of the marble, and the fire started to get out, put out. The token army says, thank you for saving me. I, I know it was a tough decision for you. Deku remained quiet, charging one for all to a more higher extent. 45% of one for all surging through him. F electricity and frost is coming off of him, making an ice storm coming up here. Clouds are getting dark, and... Starts to snow. So, somewhat heavenly. As he is yelling. A furious yell. Punching forest away. F making giant ice glaciers. As high as. Like ten times as high as. Todoroki's ice glaciers and cannon is. Destroying the forest from his fury. He is pissed that he cannot save both of them. And not only that, but some of his classmates actually did get hurt. Momo, he had, did get hurt over some message. Like, only a few people got hurt. So he mainly did say Momo, Yaya, Rosa, and others like that. He is pissed that they hurt the love of his life, too. But time for... Time to go save them, huh? And to like, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm really bad at this, kind of stuff. but yeah. And we cut to the League of Villains right now. Frost is hooked up to a chair, like can behind his, her back with quick canceling cuffs on her. Shikaraki said, "Welcome." Easy me, Midoriya. Or should we call you by your hero name, Frost? What do you guys want? I have no business with you. Oh, but you do. We want to extend an invitation for you to join the League of Villains. <laughs> and why would I do that? You all are weak. Sir. Not to say I'm not intrigued with your style of fighting, though. Ruthlessness. 
But with someone like my brother, I hate to admit that he that is a superior fighter. And clearly stronger than me. What if I tell you we can give you more power? Her curiosity is intrigued now. Go on. Shikaraki grins. We have my master, all for one. Has an ability to take and give quirks. We can give you a more powerful quirk to help you kill your brother. In return, you join the League of Villains. And Frost? Sir, smile a bit like, where do I sign up? As long as I become, I let the world know I'm number one and kill the next symbol of peace like him and the current, I'll be more than happy to join. Shikaraki is laughing maniacally out of success that they turned her with power. And that's where I'm going to leave it. The next part... Two parts I'm going to say will be of, like, they'll most likely be a separate part just for the Awful One fight, and for the Provisional License Exam. Actually, there might be a couple more parts after that for the Overhaul arc as well, because we have those three fight like, major plots left. And I'm not sure how long this video has already been, but I'm just going to stop it here. I'll most likely make Taskmaster today, too. I'm going to kind of re-edit the ending for how I did that part. So just wait until you see what I'm going to do for that. But yeah, so talk to you guys later.